my father was 19 years old, he opened up his first driving range, uh, and it was the next step in his love for the game of golf. He was a caddy. He uh, found out he could play the game pretty good, but then also he was introduced to a driving range back in the 30s in the southwest side of Chicago. He had an entrepreneurial spirit, He's, even as a young man. Definitely, he was the type of uh, individual that was a uh, self-starter. To open his own business at the age of 19 uh, was not a, a risk for him to do, or a, any type of stretch for him to do. It was really reflective of, of his personality. He landed Sheldon Heights at 115th and Halsted, and he did that for 42 years at that location. Uh, when he became a pro, uh, as he opened, his up, opened up his own facility in 1934, uh, he started playing professionally and in the 1940s played sp sporadically or seasonally on what was then the PGA Tour. So he would travel in the winter time to California, to Texas and Florida to play those events. My dad used the term poor man's country club because he wanted the, the, you know, the beginning golfer a place to come and work on his game and he always tried to give it a, an atmosphere of a person where a person could enjoy himself. My father was larger than life. Very good walking the tee line, shaking everybody's hand, trying to give them a, a free tip just to make their golf experience and their time here at Ziegfeld Troy an enjoyable one. He liked to, to drive a, a good looking car and he liked to dress well that people could remember how he looked. Uh, hence the, the straw hat that he always wore with the, the brim turned down completely. That became such a moniker for him that that's our, our logo now at Ziegfeld Troy Golf. My dad worked a full day, but in the summertime, uh, he would uh, try to knock off at about four o'clock, and we would hop in the car and take a half hour drive out to the golf course and play nine holes. It was the afternoons on a Sunday afternoon, like going out at three o'clock with your dad and playing nine holes. That was, and I think that's what the memories, you know, of, of uh, going out with him. In 1976, he uh, closed that facility and moved out here to Woodridge, where he uh, renamed his facility Ziegfeld Troy Golf after himself. When he went to all grass tees at this range here in Woodridge, people may say, you can't do all grass tees. Three years later, he opened up his par three course, which had been a dream of his life always to, to have his own golf course. Unfortunately, he didn't get to enjoy that very long. Uh, he died in uh, May of 1981. Uh, and it was at that time that uh, I became involved in the management of the facility and uh, with my brother Dennis, We've been running it together now 30 years. Tim and I are both golf professionals and there's sometimes you have people, you know, thinking that you're going to sell or sell out or, you know, do something else, but this is what we do. With the real joy of uh, celebrating my dad's 75th year in the golf business, the Troy family's 75th year in the golf business uh, a couple years ago. And we realized, you know, what a legacy that uh, we continue to live out that he had passed on to us of bringing golf to the public golfer of Chicago. the next episode of Ziegfeld Troy Legacy. Well, we're here at the uh, 30th annual Ziegfeld Troy Open. I call it Little Augusta. The secret to winning the Ziegfeld Troy Open is making putts. <laughs>